In other words, we know nothing about p hat. Because that would be the pr proportion of email usage. You with me on this, folks? So assume you know nothing about p hat. Hey, if you know nothing about p hat, what do you know about q hat? Nothing. nothing. You know neither because they're based on each other, right? So if you know nothing about p hat, can you use this formula? No. Could you use this formula? Yes. Why? Because this is the worst case scenario. This scenario says if I know nothing about p hat, I have to assume it's 50 50. But nothing about q hat, assume it's 50 50. That's going to give you the largest possible decimal. Okay, that, that, that's it. Um, if you multiply any of the two decimals together besides 0.5 and 0.5, you're going to get something less than 0.25. So assume this, and we're going to go, okay, well, now our sample size is going to be z alpha over 2 squared times, instead of p hat q hat, I'm eliminating <coughs> that. I'm saying I don't know anything about them. If it doesn't give you a proportion, you can't do that formula. You're stuck with this one. Can I still fill it out? Yeah. In fact, it's a little bit easier. It's kind of nice. In our case, we'll have is z alpha over oh, I'm not something up. Do you see it? Is z alpha over two different, or is it the same? Do you still want to be 95 percent confident? What do I plug in for p hat and q hat? 0.25 each, or just 0.25? Just 0.25, because that's what it says there. And over, over how much? 0.04 Sure, because that's still our E. We still want that. <laughs> Do you think that our sample size is going to go up or down? What do you think? Let's find out. This is still 0 0.0016. So what you're going to do? on uh, your calculators right now. You're going to take the 1.96 squared, multiply it by 0.25, press enter, then divide by 0 0.0016. Did you find something? Hope you did. What'd you get? Like that? How many were able to find that? Good for you. 600.2. So you're going to find 600 and a quarter people? That's discriminatory. Midgets are, are real people. They count. They count. You're sick. You're sick. You're all sick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, of course. I mean, you're, you're going to take 600 and how many? One. One. That's going to be good enough. I guess it's a little, I don't know. It changes every year when they are called. Hmm. What happened? Almost doubled. Almost doubled. Why? Why? What was the only difference between this instance and that instance? You knew something about this, right? You used something, some old piece of information now. Probably, this isn't going to turn out all that well for you because that's an old piece of information. If you want to start from scratch, so this would be the case if you knew nothing about your proportion of success, which is normally what happens. I mean, you take a guess at something, but you're like, you know what? I want to be really, really sure on this. I don't want to take anything for granted. Uh, if I want to just go ahead and make a confidence interval that has a certain margin of error, maybe I want to use this one because that's the worst case scenario. Worst case means you can take a slightly bigger sample size. In this case, it's almost 300 more, you know, 200 and, what is that, 62, 3, more. So, yeah, you have a bigger sample size, but you're going to absolutely guarantee that that confidence interval is accurate and that you have the proper margin of error for your, your case. How many feel okay with finding sample size? So, one case, if you know something, great. That makes a smaller sample size you have to deal with. If you don't know anything, right there, about your people. Now, I need to show you one more thing. This is actually on your homework. If you've looked at your homework, some of you have come up and go, how do we do this? Well, I haven't taught you how to do this yet. I'm going to show you how to do this, which is find out your P hat and your E from any confidence interval. I think it's like number nine or something on your homework. It 
So you should, if you really think about it, you should be able to find out the p hat, the point estimate, and the margin of error for any confidence interval that I give you. Given a confidence interval, you need to be able to find p hat and q hat and e. Let me give you a, a for instance here. I'll do this algebraically so you kind of just see it, and it will we'll create. We'll actually create the formulas. Firstly, do you agree that a confidence interval in most cases is going to be p hat minus e less than p less than p hat plus e? Yeah. And typically, this is the, well, not typically all the time. That's not a number. That's just p that stays as your your population portion that you're estimating with these two numbers. These things are numbers. So what we're going to do is use these two numbers to figure out p hat and e. Well, if you look at it, what we're essentially trying to do is remove p hat from one case and remove e from another case. Here's how you can do it. If I take a look at these two numbers, and I'm looking for p hat, if I add them together, If I add them together, do you see what's going to happen to your E's? Okay, and what are you going to be left with? No, not P hat. Not squared, you're adding. <coughs> 2 P hat. Do you see the 2 P hats? 2 P hat. Yes? How do I make that into 1 P hat? That would equal... P hat. So if I take this and divide by 2, that's going to equal p hat. Do you follow? This is how you find p hat from a proportion. Uh, from, I'm sorry, from a composite rule. You take the upper <coughs> plus the lower, or lower plus upper. divide by 2. Basically, you just average those numbers. Now, stop for a second and just think about why this works. If I give you a confidence interval, the number right in the middle is p hat, right? Because you add it to it and you subtract it from it, the same exact number. So what you know for a fact is p hat's right in the middle of those things, right? Average them. It's going to give you a thing right in the middle. That's how you find p hat. You take the upper one plus the lower one, or lower one plus the upper one, you divide by 2. p hat is the average of a confidence interval. You don't have to remember this. That was just the math. P hat is the upper plus the lower divided by 2. It's an average of those things. Again, if you think about it, look at this. P hat is right in the middle. You subtract it and add the same thing. So you average those. The P hat's right in the middle of that. Divide by 2, you got it. How do you find E? Well, if I'm looking for E, what I'm going to want to do is get rid of the, the P hat. So if I take the upper, subtract the lower, notice the parentheses have to be there. What's going to happen? Use your algebra. Yeah, what are you going to get? Do you get zero? What happens to the P's? P's are definitely gone, right? What happens to the E's? 2E. Negative or minus negative gives you 2E. How do I get rid of the 2? Is it divided by 2 there? That gives you E. Again, you don't really need to know this. They just proved it. What this says is that E equals mc squared. Obviously, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but e equals the upper one minus the lower one. Divided by 2. 
You don't even need to remember this. You just remember this. Right there. I just showed you why. What this does, I want you to think of the logic behind this. Please just stop and watch for a second. What this did is it took your two numbers and averaged them, giving you the number right in the middle. That is p hat by definition. That's how they create that interval in the first place. You follow? This one says, subtract those numbers. Now, what you have to understand is those numbers are a difference of two e's. You with me? You had p hat minus e, that's one e, plus e, that's two e's. So if I take the difference, the difference is two e's, I divide by two, I get one e. That's where this is coming from. So let's do one example of how to do, actually do this in, re in real life, and then we'll be done. Here's a 95% confidence interval. So all the work has been done for you. This is what they got at the very end of it. They got uh, 0.58 is less than p is less than 0.81. Anyone who's looked at the homework knows that looks pretty familiar, right? <laughs> if you looked at the homework. If not, uh -huh, whatever. That's a confidence interval. Agree that's confidence interval? <coughs> oh, can you tell me the interpretation for this confidence Can you think of the interpretation for that confidence interval? How, do you, how would you interpret that? You should know, because I'm going to have you write it on the test. If you can't write it out, I'm not going to catch you. Uh-oh. How confident are you? You're 95% confident that what will happen? No idea? Drawing blanks? Do you know what the actual value of the population proportion is? No. Do you know the range that it should fall in? Yeah. What range? Hopefully you're mumbling 0.58 to 0.81 right now in your head. That's 58% to 81%, right? I'm oh, sorry, that, that's, do you know the actual value of the population proportion here? But do you know the range that it should fall in? What's the range? Okay. How confident are you that it's going to fall in that range? You just interpreted it. I had to walk you through it, but that's what you're doing. You're 95% sure that the actual value, remember how I had you wrote this down? I said, quote, I don't know what the actual value of the population portion is, but I'm sure that it's within range. I'm 95% sure that it's in this range. You with me? That's what you're doing. You need to have that always in the back of your head, what you're doing here. So yeah, this is a confidence interval. I'm going to always kind of cycle that back so you, you make sure you're really getting that sticking in your head. Now, could you tell me where they started? We're basically going backwards of what you did and what you're doing on, on your work here. We're going backwards, and I want you to find the P hat and the E. What's the upper? That's not your question. What's the upper? What's the lower? To find the P, you average them. You add them together, divide by 2. To find the E, you subtract the upper minus, not lower minus upper, you get a negative. You don't want that. Upper minus lower and divide by 2. That's taking the difference of 2E, subtract, or sorry, dividing it, cutting it in half, and you get 1E. Do that now. Find me my P hat 